Hey guys, so I'm just about to go out to do a photo shoot. It's going to be with this makeup look, so if you want to see how I did it, stay tuned. Okay, so first thing I'm going to go in with is the Santi Face Primer. Primer I got off of Hush. I think it's kind of cool. I had a primer that I had a couple months ago from e.l.f., but I didn't really like it because it was just too... It felt like silicone, but like not good at all and so I was just kind of like ew and it would like do this weird thing where it would ball on my skin and I was not a fan. I was really in the market for a new primer so I picked this one up. Okay next I'm gonna take my damp real technique sponge and I'm gonna go in with my foundation. I'm gonna be using the LA Colors True Matte Foundation. I heard a lot of good things about this foundation so I love it, I use it literally all the time, so I'm just gonna take a couple pumps of it onto my Real Technique sponge. I'm literally just gonna dab it. Literally, you don't need really any more than two pumps because it just, it is everything. It goes everywhere, it's matte, which I love. I hate any other type of foundation because I have, I have somewhat dry skin, but I really love how this foundation looks on me. I know it looks super crazy and really light, but surprisingly, this is a pretty close match for me, especially since this is how I like my foundation to look. It does oxidize a little bit, which is why I'm not really concerned about it being too light. I'll just blend the rest of this out. Like the foundation and concealer vibe like works the exact same, so it doesn't matter. I'm looking over here because my mirror is over here and I'm looking in the monitor. Usually for my photo shoots, I'm like a full coverage kind of girl because it's a picture. Like you're you need to look the best that you possibly can in a picture, and I don't feel like having to edit like my skin to be super smooth if I can just make it super smooth in real life. So I like everything to be nice and even. Foundation is blended. Next, we're gonna go in with concealer. So I will be using the L'Oreal True Match Concealer. I've used a lot of it. I'm just gonna put that literally everywhere. Right on the other side. This doesn't dry down too fast, so I'm really not that concerned about having to like blend it out fast my chin, my forehead, just a little bit. I don't usually do too much on my forehead. So now I'm just going to blend out all of this concealer and just move on. I don't usually color correct when I'm doing a photo shoot because for the most part the pictures and the lighting kind of just get rid of all of the under eye bags anyway that did not get covered up completely by the concealer. So I don't really see a point in wasting product. Now, if I'm going to an event, I 100% will color correct whether or not I am taking pictures because a lot of people are going to be seeing me and I have to look snatched. I'm 100% a full coverage queen though. That's why I really do pack on the concealer and the foundation and the powder and the bake and the contour and the highlight. like. I will do the most for my base makeup because I feel like that's what's necessary, especially for the look that I'm trying to go for. Big today, I'm using the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Finishing Powder in the color 10. I know I'm not white, however, this color seems to work pretty well for my bake. I'm gonna take another Real Technique sponge. This is my baking sponge. As you can see, it has all of that on there. And I'm just going to press it into the pan got a lot of product on here so the thing about baking with a powder so light is this one for me so I really have to be careful I'm not trying to look like flashback Mary and I'm also not trying to not have any brightness so it's an interesting balance that I have to achieve when I use this powder look at that Wow just Wow I'm just gonna press it in a little bit. This bake will also serve as my setting powder for under my eyes. Not my whole face because I'm not a crazy person. 
Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set the rest of my face with some finishing powder. I am going to use just a regular old CoverGirl finishing powder, and it is in the shade 155 Soft Honey. So I'm gonna take this big puffy powder brush, just a brush that I got from icing. I'm gonna stamp it on in there, just like, I have not hit pan yet on this foundation, which is surprising considering how often I use it, but you know what, it's fine. So I'm just gonna go and literally stamp all of the powder everywhere on except my bake. Not my bake, not time to wipe it off yet. I don't like doing any swirling motions because I feel like that disrupts the foundation and the, everything that I put on, I feel like it just disrupts it. So I always go for when I'm dealing with powders over liquids, I always go for a stamping kind of motion when I'm blending, especially when it's base powder. So the next thing I usually do is contour. So I'm gonna be taking this City Colors palette and I'm going to be using the two darkest colors to contour. Literally, I got this palette, I don't know why I still have it, but you know, I feel like using makeup that I don't really care about that kind of pictures well on camera, at least for a short amount of time, works well. So to contour, I'm taking this domed angled brush. Looks like that, you know, it's kind of domed on top, but it's not really. First, I'm going to go in with this top kind of warmer brown. And I'm gonna stamp my brush in there, tap off the excess, which there will be a lot of, considering how much this palette was worth. <laughs> I'm gonna go in lightly at first, then we're gonna get heavier. The way I usually contour is I tend to focus a lot of the darkness of the color closer to my ear, and I lighten my hand as I get closer to my mouth. So it gives me, while a looking extreme on camera contour, in real life, it is very subtle. In pictures, it's immaculate. Usually when my contour looks a bit too strong, I take a flat top brush, that's just a clean flat top brush, and I kind of go in and just dust it off a little bit. And I usually just flick it up and away. This, to me, while still looking psycho, actually looks really good in pictures and I'll show you later. We're gonna go and do the other side. Dab again, tap off the excess, and we're gonna go in. We're gonna go up into the temple and a little bit on the jawline, just like that. I kind of am really lazy on the jaw. I just kind of throw my powder brush just kind of everywhere. I don't like having the strongest chin ever because then I feel like I look like a man. So I like having a nice balance. Take that flat brush again and just do the same thing on this side. Just kind of lighten up the contour and just swirl it and blend it out a bit. Even though I have a really big forehead, I've never been a fan of forehead contour because I just feel like it looks patchy and it really, I, I've honestly really never seen it look that good on anybody, if I'm being completely honest. Contour's done, and we're gonna wipe off the bake now. And this is, I'm just gonna lightly dust it off. And then I'm gonna stipple the rest of the powder into my under eyes. Just for the sake of brightening, I feel like that looks a lot better. All right, next thing is highlight. I'm going to use the Ulta Beauty Highlight Palette. This came in their Christmas collection last year, I believe. It was in the collection medium. I don't use these other two colors here because number one, this is literally my skin, and number two, I'm black, so I don't blush. But the highlight color, I found it to have a really, really nice, like, reflective vibe. So I'm gonna take my nice little fan brush. These are my favorite kind of brushes to highlight with. And I'm gonna just kind of get it everywhere. Just, mm, yeah, like that's fine. And then I'm gonna go and just kind of place it right on my cheekbone. I love taking my highlight all the way up to my temple, but I definitely concentrate more of the product on the apples of my cheeks. Like, that's pretty. 
it's nice and subtle but I think it blends in nicely with the contour so everything kind of looks like it's one nice body. We're gonna go in with the highlight and we're gonna do it on the other side. Look at that. Wow. That's amazing. Honestly, that is amazing. But we're gonna put more on because lol. We will come back to highlight, of course, we're not done yet, but we're gonna leave it for now. Next, we are finally away from the base makeup. The base makeup has been put on. We're gonna start on the eyes. Every time I do a photo shoot, for the most part, the palette I use definitely the most is the After Dark Palette by Bad Habit. So in this palette, there are nine lovely colors. They're all warm, reddish tone shades, which is what I love. I've been really a big fan of the whole cranberry red, warm, orangey, gold eye. And this palette, I think, was perfect for that. So I already had the concealer, kind of, and foundation and powder foundation put onto my eyes. So basically, no need to prime. So I'm gonna take this dome blending brush. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna use this lovely color right here, skin to skin, and we're gonna pop that into the crease. So basically, the way I like to do my eyeshadow is I love a good smoky eye. Now, the way I do it is for colors first, my base first color. To get the initial biggest part of the gradient, I will go in, tap off excess, of course, always, every time. Please don't, please don't blow on your brushes, by the way. I feel like that's the literal worst thing you could ever do. Like, if you, like, I'm not, I'm not even gonna demonstrate because I, I think it's nasty. Why are you gonna blow on your brushes? You're getting spit on your brush and then you're putting that by your eye. Like, that doesn't make sense. It's disgusting, it spreads germs, don't do it. Anyway, what I like to do with this initial gradient is I like to go in and just kind of messily pop it wherever my crease is. So I'll go windshield wiper motions and a little bit of circular motions all in my crease. And then I'll go and I'll just do a nice line motion, very lightly, dragging it out and creating kind of that wing shape. Now because the color is so light, you really can't see it too much on my eye, which is why I do recommend starting out with a color that is very ever so slightly from your skin, but very similar. So the next color that we're going to be doing in this palette is the cheeky color right up there. It's a little bit more vibrant of an orange. And we're gonna take the exact same brush and we're gonna go in. Since this color is definitely more vibrant, way more pigmented, you have to be a little bit more careful, but because again, it's still like only the second color of the gradient, you can be a little bit more lax. So This is where it gets intense. The next palette I'm gonna use for this look is the I Heart Matte Palette by Color Story. The color I'm using for this look is this nice brown shade right here. Now that is a pretty big jump from the colors that we were just using, but if you use a light hand and pop it in the right place, it'll blend out, it'll be fine. We're just primarily placing it in the crease and doing even less flicks than we did beforehand. This color, I am kind of stopping a little bit towards the center of my crease. I'm not taking it all the way down like I did with the other two colors. And we're going to barely, barely flick out. because I can get way more precision and also because we don't want the darkness to overtake all of the work of the gradient that we just did by blending out all of the colors. 
and pop it into the crease. Do not go past the center of your crease when working with this color. Super, super light hand thing. Now, with this color to flick, because we still need a nice gradient looking smoky eye, and it kind of looks awkward that there's just a buildup of dark color, but there's no equal darkness over here. Be careful when you're flicking with such a dark color. It can get really problematic when you're trying to flick and you end up stamping it halfway through your flick and then there's a nice gradient and then a bam of like pigmentation. It looks really bad. It's really hard to blend out. So just take it slow, knock off all of the excess that you possibly can with this color and you're going to flick it so gently. What you're gonna do so that you don't get too much excess product is you're gonna start right here all the way down in the corner and flick like that. I'm talking you're barely flicking anything. Like it's barely going anywhere. I'm gonna go in on the other side and do the exact same thing. Wow, that highlight like had me shook. I like forgot it was on me. The final thing you are going to do is take a brush, take another brush, kind of similar to the size that we just used, and you're going to go into the shade Arousal. Now this shade is going to make the eye look a little bit more brown, but it is the darkest color that we're using so far. So you are literally only going to put it barely in the outer edge of your crease. That's what I like to call it. I don't like using concealer for it because that's just kind of doing the most for no reason. Essentially is just putting a lighter color all on the lid. Notice how we have not put any lid color on, but like some of the pigment has just kind of gotten everywhere. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take the color Swipe Right on a flat packer brush and we're going to get it all over. Now I will say this color has a significant amount of fallout, like I think that was a lot. Can't breathe now. Cute. That's why I say dust it off definitely because you're definitely going to need to dust off the excess. You don't need to look like you baked again with an eyeshadow. So get a little bit of that on your brush and you're gonna pack it over your lid. <laughs> that you used in the I Love Matte palette and you're going to blend all of it together in your crease. I call it a lazy cut crease because I don't like it to be precise. I don't want it to have a like a cutting vibe. Like that's not the vibe that I'm going for. I'm going for a nice gradient smoky eye but I do like having some lightness in the center of my eye to really pop in pictures. So you're not going to take any more product on this brush. What you're going to use is the same old brush that you used and just nice lightly blend. You're not gonna blend past the center of your eye so that you can really maintain the lightness without getting too messy. And you're going to do that super lightly and super, super quickly. Gotta do the bottom line. All right, so we're gonna go back into Merlot and we're going to take this nice flat angled top brush and we are going to put that under our eye. I'm really gonna concentrate the stippling motion that I'm doing to really build up the pigment closest to the corner of my eye. Now that the product has kind of built up on the edge, take this angled brush and you're gonna drag it down your eye. just brighten up that inner corner so we're gonna take the only shimmer in the palette 24 karat and we are going to pop that right in the inner corner so I'm gonna take this small just flat super super tiny detailed brush and I'm gonna go in I just like to press it 
all over my inner corner. I'll stamp it up, down, around, everywhere. And then finally what I'll do is I'll bring it a little bit under the lower lash line just to meld really well with that purple that we just placed. So I'm going to be using the NYX eyeliner in the point tip shape, hella fine. Now this is not to draw the actual wing, this is just to do the base arch. Literally, it is hella fine. Like that is wild. Like that is literally tiny. Something about this eyeliner though to keep in mind, it is super, super, like it is, it is, usable. This is the wettest eyeliner I have ever used. I don't all the way drag it out with this eyeliner because there's really not a point since I will be using a different eyeliner to create the wing which will inevitably cover up the spot that I did not. We're gonna go in with a pot liner. The reason I use these is because the tip on them are made of hair essentially, which means it is very flexible and I feel like I have a way better ability to control the way the wing is, how far it goes out, how sharp it is. This is what the applicator looks like. It's super tiny. Now, this takes immense focus because while I want to get the best wing, I want the wings to match. Hazardly painted and I'll go back in with the hella fine. So I quickly finished up this wing and this wing off camera Now I'm gonna move on to mascara. So for mascara today I'm using covergirls the super sizer mascara just for my top lashes For my top lashes I use this mascara because it's nice it's voluminous and it's lengthening also because it's super dark which I really love the reason I use two different mascaras is because for my bottom lashes, I like them to be nice, but I like them to be subtle. I'm using the Mega Volume Mascara. Now you're like, whoa, I thought you wanted something subtle. I do, which is why I use this, because while it does say Mega Volume, I've also had this for a, a little bit of time. While there is some product that does volumize my lashes a little bit, it is not nearly as extreme as my top lashes see super subtle but they're just there they're like they're like oh hi but like not like oh my god so we're nearly done I'm just gonna go do my brows off camera and we'll come back and then we'll do lipstick so I just did my brows and now for the last step we are going to do lipstick so for lips today we're going to line them I'm gonna use this top pinky ish mauve kind of shade to line my lips first <music> super precise with lining just because lining for me is just kind of like a base now we're gonna go in with my favorite lipstick of all time I got it off of Amazon not gonna lie but I love the color can I just say oh my god it smells it smells like like butterscotch candy and that's like one of my favorite candies so like literally oh my gosh literally even if I'm not going for a photo shoot I'll just use this lipstick anyway, like in life. I don't like in connecting my inner corners because it like builds up really weird and it doesn't look cute. One thing I will say about this lipstick is it does dry down. So it dries down pretty quickly and it doesn't leave that little like peeling your lips apart vibe like that's not it it just dries down and it's down so essentially this is the finished look but of course we cannot forget setting spray so for setting spray today I'm going to be using the Ulta's matte setting spray 
so I'm just going to spray. Now this is very stressful because I always feel like when I spray, like it's melting. Three is really all you need. And of course, because I don't trust this, I'm gonna nicely fan. I use a matte setting spray because I don't like things to be dewy on my face. Like why would I put on a matte like foundation if I was going to put on a dewy setting spray, it doesn't make sense. So after I put on setting spray, just for good measure, I like to go in with a little bit more highlight. So we're gonna place a little bit more highlight on my nose. And on the tip. Like, it's shining. And then of course, even though these are still shining, we're gonna make them shine even brighter. So this is my finished photo shoot look. I'm actually about to go on a photo shoot right now, featured on my Instagram. So make sure to follow me on Instagram at TheBellaKing underscore, Twitter at TheBellaKing underscore. If you like the video, make sure to like and subscribe so you can stay notified and ring that little bell so that you're always up to date on all of my new uploads. So until next time, bye.